Hello, hello, and welcome once again. J76NY here, and we are back in Swordland with Anton Rain. This is episode number five of our For the People playthrough on Suzerain. Uh, last episode, we saw the country kind of go to hell in a handbasket due to the assassination of communist uh, Bernard Circus. We are also dealing with Rumberg and getting that highway project underway so sit back relax and enjoy episode number five all right let's read the newspapers first rumors of an infrastructure project anonymous sources have reported to swordland today that several government officials have invited construction companies to meetings regarding a new major infrastructure project if true this is great news as infrastructure in swordland is lacking heavily needed investment we hope that very qualified and experienced companies like underhaul construction win the bid they have room ties to the uh the bilderbergs of swordland Gang violence claims young girl's life. A 15-year-old girl was shot to death in Narble as she walked her dog a few blocks away from her apartment. The police said the shooting, which occurred in an area affiliated with the game gang Corinelli, was a reckless act of violence and the victim was not the target. The 15-year-old was shot at about 445 right before she was returning home. A man who witnessed the event told police the shooters yelled gang slogans at him on the street before he heard someone fire at least 10 shots, sources say. Yeah, the radical. 1927, never again. I was there when General Luteran and Rickard clashed in the plains outside of Holsord when the armies of Swordish people killed each other. I was there when Colonel Sol won the war after bombing cities with Swordish civilians inside them. We saw this great nation fall into bloodshed and chaos. We thought that we had learned our lesson and formed a new republic, but one man's idea became the idea of the state, and we allowed it to be forced upon us. We were a generation who lived with Tark and Sol for most of their lives. However, this generation is different. Our kids have not experienced civil war or martial law. This generation is born in a changing time. We cannot allow the same conditions to return. We cannot forget when General Luteran declared martial law in 1927, when his tanks rolled and murders took place. Those tanks cannot roll again. Bombs cannot fall again. Freedoms cannot be suspended again. 1927, never again. So they are kind of subtly letting me know they do not approve of my crackdown on political extremism and okay let's see what they have to say about the economic crisis we have all seen the scenario played before large corporate businesses time and time again receive money from the government under the disguise of helping the economy but what about the people many of the neglected region still do not have electricity or fresh water in their homes and they are the lucky ones they are growing Housing, ah, there is a growing housing crisis and people are on the streets begging for food. In the year 1954. Underhaul construction, once again, number one. Apparently they're pretty popular with the media. Uh, the economists, we think now is a great time to invest in underhaul construction, as the current year's projections already show a 13% increase in growth compared to last year. So that is something to keep in mind going forward with our highway project, the Underhaul Construction Company is pretty popular. Rumberg closes consulate. Rumberg has closed down its consulate in Swordland, one of the few East Mercopian nations to have diplomatic ties with the Northern Kingdom. This comes right after the deployment of Rumbergian troops near the northern borders of Swordland. So if we were the only ones with diplomatic ties, it shouldn't be hard to organize against them. That would be my thoughts, anyway. Rumbergian officials cite political unrest and uncertainty as the main reason for the closure while raising concerns over security in the country. In Lockhaven, a diplomatic source said the Rumberg flag has been lowered overnight and that the diplomatic staff were expected to leave Swordland on Friday or Saturday. It is not clear if the consulate closure was temporary or permanent. 
signals signaling a break in diplomatic ties which date from 1923. Our editors see the situation as a further deterioration of relations between Swordland and Rumberg. This can be easily regarded as a one-sided provocation from the north. All right. United Cantana Embassy helped protesters. Around midnight, Red Youth protesters clashed with Young Swords at the Vesord city center, resulting in many injuries. The counter-protesters were cornered in front of the United Cantana Embassy after they were pushed back by police. The embassy opened its doors and Red Youth members escaped inside. The police are still waiting outside the building for the return of Red Youth members. Uh, looks like that's the only news from around the world. Let's see what we have in the capital. Uh, react to the unrest, read the report from Whole Sword. And uh, a day at the Maroon Palace. Uh, let's read the report first before we take any type of action. Intelligence report that Arcasia has successfully completed the Missile 4, an intercontinental ballistic missile, which has the estimated capability to accurately destroy targets at thousands of kilometers range. Arcasian missile capabilities have significantly increased, posing a threat to territories that are further away from West Mercopa. Alright, let's react to the unrest. The political situation around the country has escalated. Chief Strategist Lucien Galland has prepared several action plans that we can execute. What do we do to address the intensifying political climate? Call for restraint on national television, uh, visit the affected towns in per person, label all protesters as traitors, expand the police by deploying all recruits in training, or reject all the plans. Uh, what do I want to do? Call for restraint. Visit the affected towns. Expand the police by deploying all recruits and training. We'll visit the affected towns. And I guess we're ending the day at the Maroon Palace. It was late in the evening. The Maroon Palace was finally getting somewhat quiet when I returned to my office at the top. I eagerly approached my chair and sprawled out on it. It had been an exhausting day, just like every day since I took office. Oh, here we go. Pour some whiskey. Felt like the best salve after a long day of work. You're heading... And down a dark path, Anton, I like it. I glanced downward out the window and saw Serge and the guards waiting for me by the main gate. I heard a couple of knocks at my door. My secretary, Livia Suno, entered. Okay. Mr. President, Mr. Tusk is here to see you. And he is... You had a meeting with the Lothberg spokesman. I'm so sorry for not giving you proper notice. Let's see, don't worry about it. Do your job properly next time. Do you expect me to keep track of everything myself? I was just about to leave. Maybe we can postpone the meeting. <laughs> Do a job properly next time. I was just about to leave. Maybe we can postpone the meeting. <laughs> Let's see if we can postpone this meeting. He can wait for me. But he's already here, Mr. President. What do you want me to tell him? Tell him to fuck off. After a moment, Mr. Tusk swaggered into the room. He just sort of invited himself in. 
I'd met Swordland's most prominent businessman once or twice, but never alone. He had large jowls, blindingly shiny shoes, and the air of someone who was used to getting his way. Anything to drink, Mr. Tusk? Water, whiskey, cognac. Preferably from before you were born, sweetheart. <laughs> nice mustache. I, I, I'll check the supply room as she hauls ass out of the room under the leering gaze of Walter Tusk. Livia backed out of the room, shooting me an apologetic look as she did so. Walter hung up his hat, which I could see was lined with mink. He fixed me with a long, hard stare, then broke into a toothy grin. <laughs> uh, good evening, Mr. President. I am here to congratulate you. We both sat down. Apparently nobody respects the office of president if he just walked into my room and made himself at home. My business partners and I wish you a, success wish you a successful term as the leader of our nation. Thank you, Mr. Tusk. Nod. Get to the point. Why are you really here? I'll just nod. That's as neutral as I can get right now. I had no chance to say this at the ball with all the panic, but we are very much looking forward to working with you. Thank you. I'd like to build a profitable relationship between us. That being said... There are some concerns of mine and the people I represent, which I would like to take this opportunity to clear up. Uh, I'm listening. What are these concerns or the people you represent? Who do you represent? You know that I represent the Lothberg Group, Mr. President, but of course these concerns are not limited to them. The ruined state of our economy in Swordland is... In influenced everyone. The recession hit us all hard. Walter pulled out a box of cigars from his jacket. I had these brought in from Lesbia, the best cigars in the whole continent. Would you like to try one? I'll join him for a cigar. I grabbed one out of the pot pack. Walter lit it up with his large engraved lighter. Now we're talking. A man who knows pleasure in business. Walter grabbed himself a cigar and lit it up as well. We looked out at the city scenery as we both puffed away. I heard that you purchased stock from Armadine Industries in Arcasia. Smart buy. They are developing new gadgets that are going to be profitable. With risk comes reward. I expect very good return on investment. Spend money to make money, they say. Let's see if it holds true. I figured why not take the chance. Spend money to make money. You will be surprised at what one can achieve given the resources and capitalism. I will buy a couple of thousands of shares, too, to expand my portfolio. Hope the investment pays off for both of us, President. His eyes wandered away for a moment. We were having a good start to the term, for sure, besides the recent troubles. There's been nothing but recent troubles. Glad that you have decided to promote the free market which is the only thing that can get out of, get us out of this mess. We had nothing but trouble so far. That's The ability of the free market to evolve is hard to dispute. It is good that we think alike on this matter. I look favorably to my economic team's advice. Uh, I'm going to go with what I actually said. we are had nothing but trouble so far. And the economy is not the only concern. Economy is always the biggest concern, President. Whether we like it or not, he grinned. The highway investment was a good call, but there were, was more to gain on the high-speed rail, especially for business logistics. Uh, the Agland region was in dire need of investment. Our goal was to focus on the needs of the people, not businesses. The intention of the administration is to boost the economy, and I don't want to disclose our intentions to an outsider. Uh, the Agnan, Agnland region was in dire need of investment. That's why I did it. The most important goal is to divert investment where most profits can be made for the Treasury. We can be close allies. The group, that sounds ominous, Lothberg, okay, can help you get Swordland out of the recession, which will be the key problem to solve in your term and could determine your re-election. 
Let's start with a gesture of goodwill. Soon the investment project contract will be awarded to one of the three main contenders. He pulled a check out of his pocket and slid it towards me on the table. Uh-oh. My personal bank details were listed on it, and a deposit of $500,000, 500,000 Swordish Ren, sorry, ready to be transferred. This was six months of a president's salary. If the new contract is somehow awarded to Underhaul Construction, they would not only work hard and deliver, but also do it on time. I really wish it had been someone other than Underhaul. From what I've been reading in the papers, Underhaul is uh, highly respected. Um, now he's trying to bribe me to give it to him. What do you think, Mr. Rain? Wouldn't that be good? He put his index finger on the check. There was a noise by the door. Livia Suno was standing there holding a tray with a bottle and two glasses. See, this puts me in kind of a predicament. It seems I was kind of leaning towards going with them, based on what I've been reading in the newspapers. And now he's offering me a bribe, which could increase my own personal wealth, which is now zero, because I made that investment. Do I want to take a bribe? <laughs> I'm so sorry, Mr. Tusk, but all I could find was 1942 7 I hope that's acceptable. <laughs> Holy shit, some of these words. She quickly put the tray on my desk and walked out. Tusk eyed her as she left. Remind me to visit your, often, your office more often. Now where were we? Do we have a deal? God damn it. <sighs> Indeed, Mr. Tusk, I'm looking forward to our future transactions. Take bribe. Not yet. We both know you can do better than that. <sighs> No, I will make my own decisions. Did you just try to bribe the president of Swordland? I refuse. Oh, boy. I'm going to take the bribe. He did give me a nice cigar, after all. You don't have to wait long, Mr. Rain. As a gesture of faith in our newfound partnership, I will invite you to a special meeting in the future. He grinned and let out. Oh, I got a STEAM achievement. Sweet. Donations. They give you an achievement for taking a bribe. Nice. He grinned and let out a laugh. The check was right between his hands. He pulled his hands back, and I took the check. This deal also aligns with the free market strategy your government has adopted besides boosting further investment. Our goal is to unite every stakeholder to improve the economy. The administration will main, remain... Okay. The administration will maintain a good relationship with the group. I'm very happy we can come to an agreement today, Mr. Tusk. Uh... Well, the economy is definitely our goal. Exactly. The business owners need to unite and support the growth. Thank you to your efforts, we can see it happen. We will be keeping in touch. Walter stood up, grabbed his jacket, and shook my hand before making his way towards the door. He smiled before closing the door and leaving. I gathered my things and prepared to finally head home. As I walked out, I noticed Livia still standing there, cover covering up her typewriter for the evening. Uh-oh. Did she see me take that bribe? That might not be good. Oh boy. If I may be so bold, Mr. President, did you accept his offer? Oh boy. I think I may have just gotten myself into a bit of trouble. Uh, as a matter of fact, I did. What of it? That is absolutely none of your business. Of course I didn't. How could I? you even ask me that? Don't ever speak about it again. You didn't see anything. That's none of your business. Of course, sorry to intrude. 
She and I took a moment to look out over the lights of the city before heading to the elevator. See, now I'm getting paranoid. Oh boy. Personal wealth increased by one. Okay. Let's see what the newspapers say. Keebner suggests expanding executive powers. The leader of the NFP has suggested that the new constitution should expand executive powers, adding fuel to the debate over the possibility of reforming the 1929 constitution. He pointed out the current dire situation of Swordland and emphasized the need for strong leadership. The current constitution suggests the division of executive power between the cabinet and the president, who has no immunity before the courts for acts of treason and unconstitutional behavior during office. In the system suggested by the NFP, the president would have absolute immunity before the courts, and it is the president who would chair the cabinet. It is not clear yet whether the suggestion would spark further debate in the Reform Committee with the PFJP and the USP. <coughs> the PFJP's proposal had suggested that the President should have no presidential decrees might result in the abolish, abolishment, abolishment, there we go, of assembly and take the country to an early election despite the independence counter uh, President Rain talks to protesters. President Anton Rain visited towns around Greater Holsword and Grunai regions, which were heavily affected by protests and riots that popped up around the country, triggered by the def death of Circus. He was seen talking to protesters and listening to the concerns of citizens. This sends a powerful message to sort of citizens that the government is walking among them and listening to their problems. Holsword is desperately trying to restart Swordland's economy after the recession, and this political unrest is not helping, said Swordish scholar and professor of law at Holsword State University in Holsword. Blackhaven Times, reform demands gain popularity. Demands for reform are gaining more popularity than ever. Latest public opinions reports show that the majority of the Swordish people want changes in the governmental structure that were established after Tarkinsoul's military coup in 1929. The public trust in Grand National Assembly and the Supreme Court is, it, is at an all-time low. While rumors of reform talks are coming out of the Assembly, it seemed unlikely that without complete unity, none of these parties would be able to lead such a proposal. In order to change the Constitution, the proposal must collect at least 150 signatures and then reach the needed 166 votes. If the proposal passes the Assembly, it is still subject to another voting in the Supreme Court, as well as judicial review, which still stands as the biggest obstacle before the parties, which I'm kind of wondering how we're actually going to get that through if the Supreme Court has a vote on a Constitution that limits their power. Okay, Workers' Party Solidarity March. The pro-minority Workers' Party of Bludia rallied in the Bludish majority citizen city of Erzerin. Uh, Monsoon Lek, a me Bludish member of assembly, was a speaker. And Bludish citizens targeted, so the Bludes are... Not doing so well right now. Uh, 20 blue citizens were attacked by a group of people suspected to be members of Young Swords during their peaceful protests to support Bernard Circus. The group was overwhelmed and the local police forces couldn't reach the protesters to protect them amidst the chaotic crowd. The attackers ran away without getting caught and 11 of the victims were hospitalized with critical injuries. All right. What's this? Presidential state. Uh, we got to meet with this guy here. Got to look over our economic relief plan. Oh, there's just lots of stuff to do out here. Finalization of the H3 highway contract. Read the report from Narble. 
The Ministry of Defense reports that the situation along the border is getting tense. Rumberg's Southern Army was sighted training close to our borders and did not respond after we issued radio message. The Chief of the Armed Forces, General Kruger, reports to have increased patrolling duties along the northern border to signal readiness, which is what I wanted. Uh, let's see, local police working with nationalists. One of our agents acting as a young sword member had an encounter with two members of the local police force in Enrica, Elson Balar and Vic Neze. According to the reports, the policemen tried to bribe the agent to burn down a store that belonged to a known Communist Party member who, and to instigate further violence. We have detained the policemen on charges of corruption. That's great. All right, so what do we want to do first here? We want to meet with Mr. Caranti. We want to work on our economic relief plan. Or do we want to finalize the H3 highway contract? Hmm. All very exciting. I think we should probably get this highway project underway. After driving through the cliffside roads, we arrived at Langkirk. There, cheerful, cheerful citizens greeted us, and the local government officials escorted us to City Hall. Here, a significant meeting about the H3 project would take place. Several construction companies sent their representatives to the City Hall. Well, my dogs won't shut up, so you're going to have to listen to that in the background. Even though Gus Manger couldn't make the meeting, I had Simon Hall and Lilius Graff by my side. Besides starting our economic recovery, the travel time by road will drop by more than half, Mr. President. This project will improve the Agland region. I have lived with these people and seen them suffer. I trust your plan, Simon. I hope so, Lilius. Okay, I hope so. The aim to economically strengthen this weak region will be partially accomplished. According to my estimations, this project will give about 50,000 citizens from Angland employment. Uh, what will it take to stop the recession? What kind of end results do we expect? Failure during this project is not an option. And do you need additional support? Uh, let's go with what kind of end result do we expect. Short-term employment and long-term economic development in the Nargis and Anglan regions. The underdeveloped cities like Lenkerg and Arvory will receive a lot more investment after this. Simon searched the documents he was holding and found the one he was looking for. I have the overview of the companies here. Simon handed the files over to me. Look at files. Okay. I looked at the files, three corruptions were listed, or corporations were listed. I see what kind of subconscious effect the uh, taking that bribe had on my reading abilities. The Sorta State Corporation, Underhaul Construction, and Taurus Holdings. Let's see what Taurus Holdings uh, see is a new and entrepreneurial private company that uses cutting edge construction technology from Arcasia. <coughs> Uh-oh. Oops. I reviewed them. I also took the liberty to ask the mayor of Arbery to give his opinion on the matter. Which corporation should we talk about? Uh, let's talk about Underhaul Construction. The real estate and construction giant was founded in 1925. They expanded during the economic boom of the 30s. Picking this corporation would fit our market economy policy and I was kind of paid a lot of money to do so. 
The CEO of Underhaul is Chris Scar, the mayor of Conriat. He sold half his shares a few years back. I had to work with Underhaul Construction before in Holsord. They took several contracts for the central station renovation and left much to be desired. Uh-oh. The H3 project shouldn't be left to them. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts, Simon. I think that they have been doing relatively well in the private sector, where they are dominating the construction industry with successful projects. Nonetheless, they treated their workers below our working standards during the whole sword central station contract, which is troubling. Uh, uh oh. Working conditions must be respected. This doesn't inspire confidence. Uh, we need to be able to trust the corporation. This is a base requirement for the contract. What have I gotten myself into? Working conditions must be respected. This doesn't inspire confidence. I'm going to go with that one because it doesn't really commit to not picking them. I wonder what would happen if I did pick, did pick someone else, even though I took the money. I'd make an enemy for sure. Uh, the workers were undocumented, Agnolian, and Wazek, immigrants with no papers, a clear violation of our laws. According to them, the reason of the bad labor conditions was because of the tight completion schedule, which still doesn't justify the situation. Underhaul has specifically mentioned their solid track record and highlighted the cost of the project would be more than expected for a project of this scale, but finished on time. Uh, I'm not sure about Underhaul construction. Underhaul seems interesting, but let's see the others. Well, might as well. Sort of State Corporation. Expected sort of State Corporation, also known as the SSC, was founded in 1891. It is the main state corporation tasked with running the day-to-day -day construction services of our country. The SSC is one of our most trusted and honorable companies. They have served us a long time. I have worked with them on several occasions. It goes against your elected promise of moving away from a state-planned economy. Most importantly, the sort of state corporation lacks a modern way of thinking, resulting in slower construction. A simple look at the regional highway show us the problem. The regional highway system has no relation to this. They do have a wealth of knowledge and infrastructure. I don't agree with the negative statements for the SSC. Their record clearly shows completed contracts with thousands of employees have, who have more than 20 years of experience. According to the preliminary calculations of the SSC, they would need more resources to finish a project of this size. I am on the fence about the SSC. I like the SSC, but want to hear about the others. <clears throat> Forest Holding. Taurus Holding was founded in 1946 and is owned by the entrepreneur Geralt Faze. It is a new holding company whose subsidiaries are cutting edge technologies from Arcasia to reduce construction costs and prices. They are known to provide for their workers who are part of the labor union of Swordland. There are other things Taurus does very well, like providing consultants for the state corporations but I can't vouch for their infrastructure constructions at all. Uh, why should we pick Taurus? Why shouldn't we go with Taurus? Let's uh, lead with a negative question. This company is completely private and directed by a non-governmental board. Do we even remember if they worked on a mega project at all? Lily aside. Choosing this company is too much of a risk for an important project like this, especially when a proven SSC exists. Uh, we shouldn't risk our first project. This is There is too much at stake here. Their capabilities matter more than the history they have. We may, Okay, we shouldn't risk our first project. I've already made up my mind. I mean, I, I took a bribe to go with Underhaul, so I'm going to have to do that. And the other two are just uh, not very good options. One goes against my free market principles, and the other one is uh, 
new and untested. They took a joint contract in Arcasia for restructuring the highway intersections of one of the major cities. It went well, but is their only large-scale success. We are going to try a different company. This is the most unique. The project manager from Taurus Holdings mentioned that they would be able to finish the project with the allocated funding. They are the only company who found the budget sufficient, making them cheaper alternative. Uh, I don't feel confident in Taurus Holdings. It was time to make a decision about which company to award the H3 highway contract to. Um, Underhaul seems like a good choice. A $500,000 swordish wren, good choice. Good that we are staying consistent to our economic strategy. Simon signed a certain section of the dossier and fixed his glasses. Some in the Lothberg group will be pleased. The contract will be awarded to Underhaul Construction. I wish to cho the choice was different, but at the end of the day, the success of the project is what matters. The company will be notified today and the construction work will begin immediately after. I think we are off to a good start. My expectations for a grand opening ceremony are late next year. I better get back to work then. Thank you. This concludes this meeting. The meeting ended and we spent the remainder of the day attending events in Lankirk. It was nice to enjoy the national beauty of Agland and to eat some good fish. Okay. And we see the progress of the highway project right here. We have two more meetings to go to. But I think I am going to save that for the next episode. We'll start off the next episode with uh, these two meetings. Let's read the newspapers before we go here. Construction begins for the H3 highway project. Underhaul Construction has been awarded a two-year contract for an extensive in infrastructure project. Subsequent design and construction work as part of the H3 highway expansion project in Sorbonne. Okay. So yeah, we're going to start off our next uh, episode with these two meetings. Uh, we'll see what the future has for President Rain, and uh, plan our economic relief and uh, this meeting with this guy over here, Mr. Caranti. Anyway, if you like the episode, hit the like button. Uh, interested to hear what you guys think about this uh, wildly different game from what I'm usually playing, so leave your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, if you would like to follow along with uh, President Rain as he seeks to improve Swordland by any means necessary, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you the next time we visit Swordland. J76NY saying thank you very much for watching, and have yourself a very, very good night.